fuck, that was close. <laughs> oh shit! Fuck, this is pretty fast. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> Lethal Company. Currently, this is the world's biggest game, outselling huge titles like Call of Duty and Baldur's Gate 3 on Steam. The game is simple. You work for the company. You go to different rooms to collect scrap and then sell that scrap to the company over and over again until you lose. It's a really great game, and I've spent countless hours playing it and getting hilarious clips like you saw in the intro. But how can a game be so simple, yet outsell some of the biggest gaming franchise veterans? This is the story of Lethal Company, from scrap to success. Lethal Company was mostly developed by Zeekers, with some additional assistance from some of their friends. Zeekers had been working on games since they were 11 and using the Roblox game engine, making games like Silent Duck in 2016 and Lightbulb in 2020, both using the Roblox engine. Zeekers would slowly switch over to making games on Steam and HDIO, with the most notable of these being It Steals in 2020 and The Upturned in 2022. These games would be loved by the people who played them, but would not be able to compare the success Lethal Company would eventually get. Comments at the release trailer were extremely positive, being hyped for the game's release, with even some coming back to comment over a year later saying how much they loved the game. This trailer gave a good look into what was to come, the multiplayer, the grabbing scrap and roguelike elements of the game, and even a peek into the horror. Interestingly, you could enter from an elevator and had a tan jumpsuit rather than the orange used in the final game's release. On the 24th of October 2023, Lethal Company was released onto Steam in early access, meaning that the game will still be actively worked on, with Zika saying they plan to finish the game within 6 months. In the first week, the game averaged above 1000 players, but in the weeks following, the game's momentum would not slow down, in the second week peaking at 10k players, then 20k, then less than a month after the game's release on November 19th, the game hit 100,000 concurrent players, and it hasn't really slowed down yet either, still averaging around 200,000 players per day. But why is the game so successful anyway? I think the elements of Lethal Company's success can be explained pretty easily. The game design in Lethal Company is pretty genius for replayability. At first, it seems pretty similar to a game like Phasmophobia, another horror game which is pretty similar to Lethal Company in its structure. You explore houses and try to figure out what supernatural being is haunting it without dying, much like going into bunkers and getting scrapped without dying in Lethal Company. They've even got identical voice chat systems. But where Lethal Company really excels is the quota feature. Each full expedition you go on, which consists of you and your crew going to various moons across 4 days, requires you to sell the scrap that you find in order to fill your quota to keep the streak going. The reason you want to progress further is so you can go to moons you have to pay for in hopes of getting better loot, which will keep your run going. Or you can buy a shower. The risk and rewards system created by this is pretty addictive and makes you want to get the best streak you can, and even if you do fail, oh well, just restart and do it all over again. That's another great part of Lethal Company, it's procedurally generated. Well, this means that whenever you enter the bunker to go explore and find some scrap, it'll be different from the last time you entered it. You won't get bored of exploring the same place over and over because it's different each time. The same goes with the enemies of the game, which are randomly spawned inside and outside the bunker, meaning that you may run into something different each moon you are visiting, making the game feel very fresh and original. The enemy designs themselves are also very interesting, like the bracken which sneaks up on you unless you stare at it for a bit, however if you stare for too long, you die. Or the eyeless dog, which you can sneak past because it can't see you, but if you make noise around it, it'll come and attack you. I think my personal favourite has to be the hoarding bug. It takes some scrap and has a little collection of it and will be friendly unless you provoke it. Which is supposed to be when you steal from it, but really it's whenever it wants. Never mind. Because he's killing me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> But really, the final element of Lethal Company's success is that it's just so damn funny. The proximity voice chat, which basically means when someone is far away from you, you can't hear them, makes the game really funny to watch and experience. I put some clips throughout the video to help highlight this and I've watched countless streamers play the game. I think the combination of noise sensitive monsters and loud people is an amazing mix. Was that Pac-Man? No, you ain't! Stop that! And I think that's what makes Lethal Company so refreshing. It just feels nice to play this game with a couple of friends and then laugh your ass off when one of them gets chased down by a spider or falls into a pit. Oh! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it may be a game that has this genius and smart design behind it, but the chaotic nature of the game is what really, to me at least, what helped this game explode into popularity. People will go out of their way to share clips online because it's funny. If you scroll through Twitter or TikTok, you'll see countless examples of this. In conclusion, the game's success is definitely created by the very smart game design, but the great monsters combined with the hilarious voice chats and the situation you get yourself into because of that 
really propels this game into something more than Call of Duty, something more than being a top seller on Steam, into its own territory of being genius.